actually insert these inside the fish and it does give us a chance to actually map on a, a daily or weekly or whatever basis um, the position of tuna. And it's, this is for us a very exciting, exciting prospect. Hundreds of sleek, metallic, southern bluefin tuna glide swiftly and gracefully under the waves of the Great Australian Bight. The tuna is one of the fastest fish in the world. It can swim up to 70 kilometers an hour and has enough stamina to swim to South Africa and back. We know this because of an intensive fish tagging exercise being carried out by CSIRO to save the $94 million tuna industry. The tuna have built up a thriving industry for Australia, a fine fish too. The Americans call it the chicken of the sea, and if everyone played this game of chicken, no one would worry. Back in the 50s and 60s, Japanese and Australian fishermen were hauling the tuna in by the thousands. In peak years, the Japanese took up to 78,000 tons annually for the lucrative sashimi market. But by the late 1970s and 80s, the tuna catches dwindled. The way the fishing industry responded was to use bigger boats and newer technology. Scientists warned of disaster. They joined forces with the fishing industry and managers to enforce a quota system. The result is that the tuna no longer appear to be in decline. But in an effort to ensure sustainable levels, CSIRO tags up to 1,200 fish a day during their tagging programs. The tuna are lured with live pilchards, hooked and hurled aboard and at 20 to 30 kilos of fish, that's no mean feat. The aim is to have the fish on board for as short a time as possible, of course. We have a few methods to keep them calmer while they're on board, and uh, one good way is to actually cover the eyes of the tuna. If we just cover the, the eyes, with our, either with our hand or a wet cloth, then the, the fish tends to stay calm while we tag them and then get them back into the water. As well as conventional tags, the researchers use acoustic tags. These emit sound pulses, which can transmit data on temperature or depth. However, to receive the signal, the reconnaissance vessel must chase the tuna to stay within range. This is difficult and expensive, and is usually only done for a day or two. The most sophisticated method of tagging is with mini computers which are inserted into the body cavities of a few of the largest fish. The custom-made microchip, known as a smart tag, can record its body temperature, sea temperature, the depth of the water, and its location within 60 nautical miles. The memory chips here are very similar to the memory chips in most people's computers. Um, uh, we have a little optical light sensor ports here that we fit into a special little reader connected to our computers and uh, it spits the data out as, as any uh, data logger would. The device can store information up to nine years, enabling scientists for the first time to monitor long-term southern bluefin behaviour patterns and responses to the environment. This groundbreaking research will tell scientists of the long-term movement and migration patterns of the tuna. The tags, though, are only as efficient as their return. Scientists rely on the Australian and Japanese fishing industry to return all tags they find. With tuna selling for $200 a kilo on the Japanese sashimi market and a record in 1992 of $50,000 for one fish, it's a valuable industry, well worth scientists and industry working hand in hand to preserve.